have you ever thought about seeing an anaconda? And I was like, I would love to see an anaconda. And he was like, well, um, we go on this one hunting trip every year. He's like, it's a bit of a ceremony. He's like, me and my brothers and my dad, we get in a boat and we pack like two weeks of supplies and we go way up this river to a point where there's like, there's no, past the point where the, the, the features of the land have names, like really wild. And he was like, but every time we go there, he's like, as you're going up the river, he's like, we see anacondas on the side. And so he's like, do you want to come? And so I went to his parents' house to meet his brothers. And at this time he was introducing me to them. And these are the people who have become my life friends. But um, it was like, we, we had a meeting and they said, yeah, join us. We went on this expedition. And like the first thing we found was this like 13 foot huge female anaconda. And I just jumped out of the boat, grabbed it by the head. It wrapped around my arms and uh, that was the start of something. And we started, we were saying, let's start measuring the anacondas on these rivers. Let's see how many anacondas are on which rivers. And like, let's start putting together something that could become a study at some point. And uh, pretty quickly we got into trouble with that because then there was like a 15 foot anaconda this one day and uh, she, was, she was sleeping on this log. And so what happened was they dropped me down upriver. They took the boat down river and they said okay we're going to come from either side and we're going to surprise her and so this anaconda is asleep she's probably about as thick as a basketball around like pretty pretty decent sized snake and she's dead asleep and as i'm crouching in and i'm coming in and we're like we're like wearing like just boxers and like what is she feet. laying on she's laying on this tree by the okay. side of the river okay and uh as i'm getting close to her all of a sudden she just like wakes up and i see like the muscles flex and i see she's getting ready and i'm going oh no and boom, she goes into the water and she's going to just run away. So I run forward. I grab her. I pull her back. She strikes at me. And as she strikes at me, I just just grab her head right before it hits my face. So I have this snake. I get my, another hand on. So once you have control of the head, they shouldn't be able to bite you. So I'm like, all right, good. Got control of the head. I start screaming for the guys. I'm like, JJ, JJ. I'm holding on to the snake. Now, here's the thing that I didn't anticipate. She wraps a coil around my hands. Suddenly, my forearms are tied together. And I went, oh. And then... All of a sudden, the next coil comes around over my neck. And so now my my shoulders and my arms are out of my control. The snake owns them. And this is like a 150-pound, 200-pound snake. And so I get pulled to my knees, and then she starts the constricting. Because as far as she knows, I'm a predator attacking her. Snake starts constricting. My collarbones were inches from touching. Like my shoulders were just coming together until my, my shoulders were like, I felt everything about to break. Right at that minute, the rest of the guys got there. They started unwrapping her. You have to unwrap an anaconda from the tail. And so they start unwrapping her, and I just, <gasps> I just got this breath. And it was like the closest I ever came to getting crushed to death by an anaconda. And that was one of the first experiences I had with them. But we returned from that expedition with these photos that made, like, even the local people were like, what did you guys do? Like, are you insane? And then that's where gringo loco comes from where they started uh, they all started calling me gringo loco and uh but yeah that's the long-winded way of answering your question that then when i went home back to new york eventually i had to do like a college semester i'd like show up for a college semester with like bullet ant stings on me and like thorns <laughs> sticking out of my skin and i'd be like yeah i know i'm 10 days late but i was taking care of a giant anteater and they'd be like what but um, eventually, you know, somebody interviewed me, uh, the guys at mongobay.com actually, I think were the first ones to do an interview and, uh, it was anacondas and floating forests, the secrets of the Amazon. And it was just like this thing. And then ever since then, it's just been this, people were just, you know, kind of just like, you're the anaconda guy. Mm. And then that started that, but it was like, that, that was just, you know, at the time we were just barefoot dipshits with you know a right. machete in the jungle we didn't right. have a plan we didn't know what we were doing i was just trying to like make up for all the time i felt like school had stolen from me i just wanted to go live a life and have fun and have adventures um it wasn't until later that you know the whole protecting the forest thing came around when you went down there i find it fascinating that they thought you were a psycho for being so obsessed with the snakes because i yeah. don't think are those guys how do they feel? They're not going, trying to like touch or catch no. snakes. They don't want anything to do with snakes, right? Oh no, God, no, 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 no. They're I feel like it's something that's ingrained in human DNA that we are just inherently terrified of, of fucking snakes. Uh, it's a, that's a weird question. I've always wondered about it because so many people are so scared of snakes, but two things. One, if you take a child and you show them a snake and I'm talking, I've done this. I've done this with like nieces, nephews, my, my friend's kids. Um, where you be, we'll be out on a hike and we'll find like a big black rat snake, a snake that cannot hurt you if it tried, but it's big and it looks scary. 
get the kid over and get, pick up the snake. And a lot of times you don't even need to hold them by the head. You say, you could touch the tail. And the kid's like, really? That's amazing. And they touch the tail. And it's, there's no fear. Um, and the same thing with when you take, uh, I've had, you know, a 65 year old woman come with me on the tours I lead to the Amazon and just say, if I even think about a snake, I'll start crying. Mm. And I've done that thing where I catch a snake, I go sit on, you know, at the research station, I'll go sit on a couch and I'll say, look, I want, what I want you to do is sit next to me. I want you to sit next to me. And sometimes they can't, but then eventually I'm like, look, this is your goal is you got to sit next to me, sit next to me. I'm just handling the snake nice and calm and I, I can calm them down. And then eventually it's okay let let one bit of the snake go over your finger and then it's okay maybe let your hand on the back end of the snake and then eventually they're holding the snake and then a few things happen first of all they go this is an amazingly beautiful animal which it is and then next they feel really accomplished they overcame their fear and they realize oh my god this is nothing to worry about because most snakes that aren't venomous like you take like a garter snake it's a, a, a blue jay could kill it like a bird could eat that if they're helpless um, so, so unless it's a spitting cobra or a bushmaster or a rattlesnake, uh, snakes for the most part are just little animals that live near ponds and eat frogs and, and rats and help us to not have diseases because they control pests. Hmm. Is that how you explain it to the indigenous people down there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, and then, you know, they, they would get pissed because we've had a few things where like, you know, a snake will come into someone's farm and like eat a goat. You know, right. and, and the farmer's pissed. And so we have to go deal with that. Rest, hopefully rescue the snake before he kills it. Um, there was one really sad instance where some people had come from a different, <coughs> they came from a different part of Peru and this family settled in the jungle and they let their kid go out fishing in a swamp. And this is, I think he was like a nine year old kid and he was sitting there fishing in the swamp, which, you know, uh, Anaconda grabbed him by the leg, wrapped him up and killed him. And then started to eat him, and it was almost over his knees. It went from the head over the knees, and then the family showed up and saw it, and they all started beating the snake and trying to. They thought they could rescue the kid, but by the time a snake is swallowing you, you're dead. They've yeah. crushed most of the bones in your body. Right. Um, so that was very sad because they didn't they didn't understand that um, <laughs> there's dangerous things out there in the <sighs> jungle. Um, and so, like anacondas are not man eaters. You know, once in a while, you know, deer, deer are vegetarians, but in the thick of winter, they have been known to eat a baby bird in the spring. You know, it's mm. like whatever, whatever calories you can find in nature. What is an anaconda's uh, preferred food? Oh, capybara, caiman, birds, <clears throat> fish. And so the crazy really thing, like crocodiles. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Fuck. Yeah. So in the Amazon, um, anacondas are unique because most species have like a like a, a level that they they exist in. So you take like a. A cat like a jaguar is going after like deer and wild boar and things like that. An anaconda is born at like two feet and they're live birth. They're not an egg. So they're born at like two feet long, little thing, you know, just like, like a thick cigar. Mm. This is a little snake though that again, like a, a heron could walk up to this snake, peck it on the head, swallow it. Mm. So they're food for other species. The baby came and are born around the same time of the year. And so the anaconda and the baby came and these little crocs are facing off. So who can eat who? And it's sort of this like arms race, who can grow? And that's why anacondas grow quickly. Um, but what you get with anacondas is that a baby anaconda is starting off with like fish and bugs and frogs. And then it goes up to like shorebirds, like the herons and the crocs. And then it's going up to like paca and rabbits and all these other things. And then at the top of when you get a full grown, you know, 20 foot anaconda, 26 foot anaconda, you're talking about they could eat tapers. They could eat something the size of a cow. They could eat a human. They could eat a jaguar. They could eat whatever they want. They're an apex predator. So they mm -hmm. go, they have this outsized um, influence on the ecosystem they, they're in as an apex predator. So they're really a unique species like in that regard.